Well, the big story tonight, Nokia is taking the battle straight to the doorsteps of market leaders Apple and Samsung in the Nokia World event in Abu Dhabi today. The company unveiled its new Windows-based tablet, the Lumia 2520. The tablet comes with a 10-inch screen and a 6.7 megapixel camera, which has been priced at $499. Not just that, Nokia also launched the Lumia phone with a bigger 6-inch screen and a 20 megapixel camera. The new Lumia 1520 has been priced at $799. The company also launched three low-cost phones in its Asha series, targeting developing nations like India. One of the Asha models will also support 3G, and these devices have been priced at $66. 89 and 99 dollars respectively. Here's Nokia's executive vice chairman Stephen Ellop in an exclusive conversation with CNBC TV 18's Malvika Jain in Abu Dhabi. Take a look. We decided to enter the market with a series of products that demonstrate the very best in design, some great imaging capabilities, the ability to take pictures in a beautiful way, as well as a whole range of new experiences. And with each of the devices, we pick the moment to enter the market when we think we have a very compelling and differentiated solution, something that really stands out. So whether it's something like the, the Lumia 2520 tablet, where the design of this is so beautifully aligned with all the other work that we've done, we look at products like that and say, pick the right moment to enter the market. And today we felt it was the right moment for these products. In hindsight, do you feel uh, that Nokia should have probably tried at least one device on the Android platform? So our belief was it was more important to focus on something that was truly different. Because if you look at the Android marketplace right now, while there is one vendor who's quite successful, there are many others that have fallen by the wayside and are having a great deal of difficulty. We recognize the need to partner differently because of where we were in our development with Symbian and various other efforts. We recognized that difference and said we need to do something quite different. And so we're pleased with what we've done. Well, this launch of Swanky Asha devices and convergence with, say, an Instagram or a WhatsApp is something that's been on Nokia's mind for a while but you know we did not see any movement and now uh, with your intent uh, to enter into a deal with Microsoft we are seeing a lot of traction so is it correct to infer that it's actually Microsoft that's driving Nokia's future strategy already? The timing of the launch of any of these devices is unrelated entirely to the Microsoft transaction with Nokia. Devices like this take many months to properly plan and consult with customers about. And so to be able to stand here today with working devices with brilliant new experiences is something that's many, many months in the making. And so what you see here is a natural next step in the process that you've seen with, for example, our Lumia products all along. So Stephen, what is it uh, that the Microsoft deal would actually mean for Nokia as a company in terms of its business strategy, operations other than uh, the devices segment, and in terms of human resource planning? So two things happen simultaneously when the Microsoft transaction happens. And just to remind viewers, it hasn't happened yet. It's something that's subject to our shareholder approval and regulatory approval. When it does happen, the devices team at Nokia will join Microsoft and our belief, because of the opportunity to reduce the natural frictions between two companies, the ability to place greater concentrated and focused investments, the pooling of technology, we think this means an even greater chance of success for the Windows Phone efforts, which translates into better job security and growth for that portion of Nokia that's going to Microsoft. But of course, Nokia separately carries on after the Microsoft transaction because it has the Nokia Solutions and Networks business, which is focused on mobile broadband. Right. It has the here mapping capability and its intellectual property capabilities. So that's, of course, uh, the product agenda. But Elop also spoke about Nokia's taxation troubles here in India and also expressed hope simultaneously that the issue could be resolved through dialogue. We have always followed all of the proper regulations and everything appropriate from a tax perspective. And of course, we're very open and continue to work with the Indian government to find a resolution to the, the difficulty. And I hope at some point we will. Do you think arbitration is an option? I think we'll just continue to work with the government and, and find a way through it. Well, that's Stephen Ellup in an exclusive conversation with CNBC TV 18's Malvika Jain.